Good afternoon, welcome to PCR TV. My name is Jonathan Byrne. I'm joined this afternoon by my colleagues Andreas Baumbach and Goran Stankovic. So welcome to everybody. We're going to discuss the topic of left main PCI in everyday practice. And I'm going to start with a question for Goran. Uh, Goran, could you talk me through how you manage your patients on the cath lab table who you've identified significant left main disease? Talk me through the processes that you go through in deciding on treatment for that patient. Left main PCI nowadays is really a mature procedure. With evidence coming from recent trials, we know there is no big difference, at least no significant difference in heart endpoints compared to surgery. So it depends on clinical presentation, and if we speak about elective cases, then we discuss with patient and we discuss with surgeon. For each of the cases, I think it's good to exchange opinion with colleague surgeon, ask for his preference, and then discuss with patient. Individual decision is something that is really a result of the MDT discussion, and I think by individualizing treatment, taking into account clinical presentation, clinical characteristics, comorbidities, and anatomy, plus local practice of you as interventionist and your colleague surgeon, you make the best decision for your patient. Thank you, Goran. So, Andreas, there's been a lot of recent data on left main PCI comparison to surgery. Talk me through what factors might make you swing one way or the other in deciding what treatment the patient has and, and how you go about doing that. I think we're talking Noble and Excel. We, we have two uh, big trials that were comparing left main angioplasty with, uh, with the surgery with basically, at least in the early years, equivalent results. Um, you know, some have more side effects on this one and some have more uh, repeat interventions on that one. I believe what we should use these data for is involve the patient in a more patient-focused decision-making process. We can now tell the patient that it is not about life or death whether he or she has angioplasty or surgery. It's about the need for repeat intervention. It's about stroke. And uh, we can involve the patient more in the decision-making process. It's about balancing the risks and benefits. And I think, as you say, the risks are small now in, in routine practice for PCI and surgery. In terms of dealing with the individual patient with left main disease on the table, do you think the practice should be to take them off the table and go for a heart team MDT discussion? Or do you think we've moved on with modern trials to a more angioplasty-based approach without the need for a heart team discussion? Do you think we always need it? Well, at, at Bath, we would always take the patient off the table. Of course not if the patient is in, in, in a shock situation, an emergency situation. But in an elective um, situation, I do believe there is a choice. And um, as we just discussed, I think there are pros and cons. There are technical issues always to be considered. So I think, yes, patient should be taken off the table. Uh, the option should be discussed. I think an MDT is the right thing to go, and then uh, the patient can decide together with the team. Thank you, Andreas. And, and Goran, do you think other anatomical factors and patient factors should influence our decision? So, for example, distal left main bifurcation compared to body and osteal disease, or do you think we should be more pragmatic about which patients we, we, we choose for interventional surgery? Yeah, anatomy is very important, of course, for PCI. For osteum and shaft, we have enough evidence from previous trials. It's accumulating now with the new trials that we really have very similar results also regarding the repeat intervention rate compared to surgeon. More difficult is treatment of distal left main, and in distal left main we have to uh, carefully measure vessel sizes, presence of calcium, angulation, discrepancy in diameters between LED and CERC, and then decide on prop uh, appropriate strategy. But use of imaging is something that we really strongly encourage, because by use of imaging, you can really do more complete assessment of the lesion, and it can help you guide the procedure. It's usually IVUS, and except for osteal uh, location, also OCT does uh, the same data. So you make a very good point about having all the information available to you when you do the intervention. Do you, do you think scoring systems, anatomical scoring systems like Syntax Score are helpful in planning whether or not the patient has PCI or surgery? 
in left, with left main disease? Yeah, scoring systems are important because based on syntax too, we can really calculate expected four-year mortality. We compare both surgery and PCI, and then if there is no huge discrepancy, you actually have the evidence for deciding better which strategy provides better outcome. Andres, do you think there's one strategy preferred over another for treating the distal left main? Do you think we have evidence that different bifurcation techniques have different outcomes in the left main? Well, I'm, I'm not aware of any data other than the usual uh, preference for provisional stenting if you can. However, a lot of uh, distal left mains require two stents and I think what you want at the end of the procedure is you want a wide open system. You do not want to leave the patients with suboptimal uh, results. Whether you achieve that with a culotte or a, a mini crush or a T-stent, I think I don't know whether one is better than the other. What I know is that you have to respect um, the physics and the expansion capacity of your stent system because the left main is a very big vessel. Thank you. And, and Goran, after the procedure, third generation drug eluting stents, what duration of dual antiplatelet therapy would you leave a patient post left main PCI on? Standard length? Longer? Indefinite? Yeah, we don't have uh, any evidence that longer than standard up to one year provides improved clinical outcome. So this is what we regularly do these days. We go up to one year of double antiplatelet therapy and then switch to sole aspirin. Sure. And what about follow-up for these patients? In the years gone by, there used to be routine angiographic follow-up. Andreas, what do you do routinely with your patients who've had left main intervention? Well, I, I believe there is uh, importance in letting the patient know the symptoms uh, that are to be expected from a potential restenosis. We would do a clinical follow-up, but we would do a clinical follow-up. We would see them at 3, 6 and 12 months. In rare exceptional cases, like a secondary stenosis, um, a suboptimal result in the circumflex ostium, which is sort of the Achilles heel of left main stenting, we have brought patients back after six months just to make sure everything is for good angiographic for angiographic follow -up. Do you think functional testing is a correlate or even CT imaging for these large proximal stents? Well, have, have CT, as you know, CT imaging with a metallic stent inside, you know, it, you can get funny results. Uh, functional testing is certainly a, a good idea in these patients. Thank you. And, you know, finally, we, we worry about stent thrombosis. We worried about stent thrombosis before with third generation stents. There is some data on longer term dual antiplatelet therapy for higher risk patients. So patients with a large amount of metal work in their coronaries or extensive stenting. Do you think there's a rationale for extended duration DAPT in low bleeding risk patients who have complex coronary intervention, such as left main PCR? As I said, uh, up to one year is something that is routinely recommended. Depends whether patient presents as acute coronary syndrome or it's really stable angina. For stable angina, we don't have really clear evidence that complex intervention, if it's optimally performed, that's why I stress the importance of imaging. Yeah. So you really make the best. You are sure that your stents are well open. In that case, we really don't extend above one year. So final summary of the data, I think perhaps Andreas, you could give us a quick summary of our discussions this afternoon and the over, over evidence for routine left main PCI. Perhaps you could. I think if I had to summarize this, then uh, we're more and more uh, in an area where there is a choice to be had. It is not black uh, or white, not surgery versus angioplasty. The majority of patients really can be given a choice and the choice uh, has to be informed by the anatomy, by your own uh, capacity, um, by the techniques that can be used, the material that can be used, uh, and then involve the patients because we now have more data to support an informed discussion. Thank you very much, Andreas. Thank you very much, Goran. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.